Good morning. We're so glad you are all here with us this morning. Stand and let's sing. Welcome to ICF. Um, we are a diverse, spirit-empowered church who worships the Lord together and lives by God's word, rep rep repenting of sin, excuse me, pursuing unity and growing together in Christ. Um, I have a couple of announcements for you this week. Um, one is that our women's, um, our women's Bible study continues every Tuesday at 4.45 via Zoom. And it's a wonderful time of fellowship and of time in the word. Right now we're in a um, first... Thessalonian study. So come join us. If you have any questions about that, um, ask me or Joy or anybody in the church, and we'll uh, make sure you get the link. And also, exciting, um, there's going to be a new opportunity to study judges with um, Pastor LaSalvia, with our new pastor, um, via Zoom on Thursdays at 7 p.m. In those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did whatever was right in his own eyes. The book of Judges cracked a window into the brokenness of the human soul. We're going to watch a nation struggle with its identity and its relationship to its God. Heroes and heroines arise, but in the end, each one of them proves to be a broken savior. Stories are some of the most bizarre and interesting stories found anywhere. 
They are glimpses of humanity as applicable today as they were back then, and they reveal a God that is working above the chaos to bring redemption. Judges gives you a glimpse into the heart of the true God that never stops pursuing his people. God uses obedience and faith, not strength or talent, to accomplish his purposes. God saves the weakness through ordinary people who just make themselves available to him. We all experience fear, and God doesn't call the brave, you see. He makes brave those he calls. God has a calling on your life. The great temptation is to sit back and do nothing. You need to get into the fight. It's not foreign nations that are Israel's actual problem. Israel is her own problem. We don't need a savior that can simply fix our situations. We need a savior that can fix us. The ultimate point in all of this is preparing us for the ultimate deliverer who would come and win the greatest battle against the fiercest enemies, not by strength, but by humility and obedience. You see, Jesus is this true king, Israel, and we are seeking. He's the only one that can give us the salvation that we long for. All the judges have failed, you see, but Jesus has succeeded. He is the deliverer that Israel and that we have always been looking for. And now our call to worship this morning is from Revelation chapter 7. Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. So let's worship saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence today with fear and trembling united as your people. God, we long to experience your presence today, to worship you in spirit and in truth, that we might be transformed to be sent from this place to do what you have called us to do, to be part of bringing your kingdom here on earth. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing with us as we continue our time of worship. <clears throat>
We're now at the point in our service where we have an opportunity um, to worship the Lord in giving him back what's his. And so I invite you to um, join us in offering your tithes and offerings to the Lord at this time. If you aren't here with us in person, or even if you are, and online is the best option, there's um, the link through the website um, to be able to do it that way. And of course, there's a Dropbox for those of us here in person um, at the back of the, of the sanctuary to be able to make our tithes and offerings. Uh, we have some prayer requests today, and we're going to watch a video about one, and then um, if you have other prayer, prayer requests, I'll be asking in just a second. Thank you, everyone, for today. I hope I see you soon. Let us keep praying and keep serving the Lord with gladness today and all through the week. Blessings. Does anybody have any prayer requests this morning? Yeah, Paul. Okay. Anybody else? Be praying for our family this week. We're going to be traveling. Um, well, five of the six of us will be traveling out of the country, and um, little Bubba won't be able to join us. So be praying for our hearts in that too. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Great God in heaven, we come boldly to your throne of grace because of the blood of Jesus. And we ask, Lord, because we know that you told us we can. We know that you have inclined your ear to us and that you hear us. And so today, Lord, we lift up the La Salvia family to you. We ask, Lord, that you would pave the way for them to make it to Honduras soon. Lord, that you would um, do a miracle in regards to their visas and that you would continue to prepare their hearts and our hearts um, for their arrival here. God, we thank you for um, giving us a shepherd and we ask, Lord, that you would um, Help us to be a flock that welcomes him um, and that his voice would be your voice for us, Lord, that we would be able to um, draw nearer to you because of his leadership. God, we thank you. God, we also lift up Paul's unspoken prayer request to you, Lord. We continue to ask you, Father, for miracles. We continue to ask you, Lord, that you would um, bring shalom, that you would bring wholeness. God, that you would bring peace, that you would bring... Um, your Holy Spirit, to lead and guide in all of those circumstances. God, we thank you for opportunities to travel for our family and for so many families um, this season. God, we ask that you would go before all of us. God, you know all of the details. And Lord, we ask that you would, um, that you would prepare a way, that you would comfort our hearts in the hard times. And Lord, that you would um, continue to be a father to the fatherless. Lord, we love you, and we ask that you would um, soften our hearts to hear your word shortly, God, and that it would be a word from, um, from Brother Rodney for each of us today, that we would leave this place transformed for having been in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we ask that you stand with us one more time.
Ricky, you may be seated. I invite the children to join me for Children's Church outside. Um, today we posted the last of the videos for children that will now be in-person Children's Church rather than online. So that's exciting. And I hope that others will start joining us and coming to church for in-person Children's Church. And um, so any kids that want to come with me right now during the sermon time, we're going to go back there for Children's Church now. Good afternoon, International Christian Fellowship Honduras. This is Rodney La Salvia from the high mountains of the Andes in South America, coming to you by the grace of God. Let us pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, I pray that your word for us today will be a nourishment for our souls. And as we receive your word, and the teaching that you have for us, that you may minister to us through your Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit may move freely today and touch our hearts and tell us the truths that we need to hear to be closer to you and to love you and commit to you even more. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Many of you know this passage of the Bible that is in Matthew 28, at the end of Matthew 28, that says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you to the end of the age. This passage is the calling for many missionaries, and many Christians have responded to this call. And uh, this Great Commission is the will of God for all of us to go and make disciples. So today, as we go into this message, I want to tell you a story. A story about a young couple that decided to hear the Word of God and to obey the Word of God. And um, this young couple was called to go to another country. And God literally told them, go and I will give you a huge blessing as you are obedient to my word and you go there. Then they go with this promise of God to receive a huge blessing. Now this testimony may be a little longer, but please bear with me, okay? Uh, this young couple, they went out. They went out to a different country. They left their families. They said their goodbyes, and they somehow knew that they will never be able to return to their home country, and uh, they left. They went to this other place, and as they started the life in the other place, there was some economical problem at, at this other place. And they couldn't receive any funds from back home, so they decided to leave this country where they were called to for a little bit. And they went to a neighboring country just for some time until the economic problem and the and all the political turmoil uh, ended at, at this place. Now, as they went to this different place, they found themselves trying to find a good job, trying to make a living, and then there was a great opportunity for the wife 
to do something that was maybe a little iffy. You know, the job was only for single women and uh, they decided to take it anyway. But after some problem, the boss found out that this lady was married, therefore she couldn't do the job that she was hired for and she was fired. But this little time got them enough to uh, uh, make themselves uh, well enough to go back to the country where they were called. As they got there, oh, I forgot. As they left, they, they, there came with them a nephew with uh, this uh, young married couple. And uh, this nephew, uh, godson, uh, if, if you please, it was with them and they uh, started together working and working for the kingdom of God. Now, these people were, as we say in the missionary language, tent makers. They were making, they were working to make their own money, to raise their own support without the help from family or from people back home. So as they were tent makers, they were working and they were working really hard and they started a business and the business was blooming and they were doing really good. So good that the nephew decided to uh, branch out and start the same business, but in a different country, in, in, in a different place of the city, sorry. So as he went to a different place of the city, the best place of the city, he started out and he started out really good, but then he got into trouble. And he got into trouble with some bad people. And at some point in time, he was even kidnapped and needed to be rescued by the uncle. Now, the uncle, he went all out and he went out all out to rescue his uh, nephew. And as he rescued him, the, there was such success in the rescuing and, and, the, and the coming back from all of this, that a pastor from a different denomination came and decided to have fellowship with them and have communion with them. And after all this, the couple, after being in trouble the first time, the second time, and all that, they and after prospering economically in this country where God had called them to be, they kept asking and they kept looking for God's blessing. Now, at this point, you may think, well, Pastor Rodney, Tell me, who is this couple? And who is this uh, nephew that went with them? And uh, who are these people? Why are you telling me this story? Well, you may have heard this story from the Bible. You may have recognized this couple as Abraham and Sarai, his wife. And they, I, I just rephrased the whole story of Abraham up until the rescuing of Lot, their nephew, in today's modern terms. Why? Because sometimes we are too hard on ourselves. Sometimes we take uh, issue with some things that, to be honest, God knew that they were going to happen. We go to a different place, we find problem, and we, we find problems, we find trouble, and we start questioning ourselves and we think, is this really the will of God? Am I really living according to God's will? And I just told you the story of Abraham. And if you were thinking all this time that there was just a 
normal couple from the 20th century that went on a missionary journey, then you may think, wow, this couple was really messed up. They lied, they, uh, the husband set up the wife to work in a singles only club or something like that. But this is just a contextualization of Abraham's story. And Abraham is well known as the father of the faith. And if he did all of these things, how much more God will be with us even when we mess it up. So I just want to tell you a few lessons from the story of Abraham and the story that I just told you or rephrased for you in the beginning of the sermon. Let me go to the lessons learned from Genesis chapter 12, chapter 13, and chapter 14. And again, I don't want to go all the way in depth into the whole story. I just want to get the lessons from the story and from the story that I just told you. The first lesson that, that we have is to be obedient to what God said. Be obedient to what God says. In the story of Abraham, we know that he got the call from God and he got his wife, got his things, and he just went. Maybe God is calling you to missions. Maybe God already called you to missions and you're already there. Or maybe God is calling you to do something a little more specific. The lesson that we get from Abraham is just go, be obedient, be obedient to God. No matter what happens, problems may come. I can assure you problems will come, but God is always faithful. And as problems come, there's something that God already knows. We will mess up. We are always messing up things. But God is there. God knows that already. Just repent. Move on. Move closer to God. And keep on keeping on. Be diligent on what God has entrusted you to do. If God has called you to do something, just be diligent. Try your best to do it according to God's will. And even if you mess up, just don't get stuck in your mistakes. You don't see that Abraham got stuck in his mistake and he ended up discussing with Pharaoh when he went to Egypt in chapter 12 and all that. No. He just said, okay, I messed up. I'm sorry. Let me go back to what God called me to do. So, just God knows. God knows that problems will come. God knows that sometimes we mess up. But we just need to repent, move on, and move closer to God, and continue to be diligent on what he has called us to do. Second, be ready to rescue a brother. Be ready to go maybe out of your way to look out for another one, to look out for another person that might be close to you, that may have uh, had a fight with you in the Bible, Chapter 13, we see that Abraham and Lot, they had a problem with each other because they were prospering too much that they had to separate themselves. And Abraham just said, okay, you choose and I will stay with whatever you don't want. Lot seemed to have chosen the best part because he went close to a city, he went to the best part 
uh, the best land and all of that. But in the end, Abraham was faithful and he went to the place that God had called him to be. So be faithful to God. And again, be diligent, but also be ready to just stick up your hand or just to reach out to somebody that has fallen or that has uh, probably make a bad decision and reach out to them, call them back, call them back to the center of God's will. And maybe you can be that person to rescue another one, to confront him with sin or with something that they are not doing right. And you will be able to gain someone and expand the kingdom of heaven. Again, not just that, but as you do that, and if, as God sees your faith and your commitment, and as you work for the kingdom of God, seek communion with others. We see that in chapter 14, out of the blue comes somebody named uh, Melchizedek, king of Salem. And he goes to Abraham and he blesses him. I, in, in my little story at the beginning, I called him a pastor from another denomination, you know, because really this Melchizedek, he comes out of the blue. We don't know where he comes from. In, in the book of Hebrews, uh, they called him in a different way. Uh, and they called Jesus a type, they, they called Melchizedek a type of Jesus. And he says, literally, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Because he's not in the order of uh, Aaron, the the brother of Moses, he comes from a different place. And we don't really know. But what we know is that he was a servant of the God Most High. We know that he was a servant of God. And we know that he went to Abraham in Genesis chapter 14, Verses 18 and 20, it says, Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of God most high, and he blessed Abraham, saying, Blessed be Abraham by God most high, creator of heaven and earth, and praise be to God most high who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. It is interesting that from the beginning, even though God had chosen Abraham to start a work that continues even today, because from the seed of Abraham, we have Jesus. And we have pretty much all of us are counted as descendants of Abraham in the faith. But God was faithful. And this Melchizedek seems to be coming from a different place. We, as an international church, especially as an international church interdenominational, we need to be open to other people that are working for the kingdom of God, to other people that are followers of Jesus, to other people that maybe they don't have communion every Sunday like we do, or they believe slightly different than we do, but we can work together for the glory of God and for the expansion of the kingdom. So let's just count those who are with us for the kingdom of God. It is interesting that even Jesus, when the disciples went and told them uh, and told Jesus, 
hey, there are some people that are preaching and they are doing this and that. And Jesus said, just leave them alone. If they are not against me, they are for us. So we need to be for Jesus, for God, for his kingdom in every step of the way. Lastly, God is faithful. No matter how much we mess up, God is faithful. In Psalm 146, 6, it says, He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. And in the New Testament, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, it says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. So God is faithful. And we need to have this in front of us all the time, knowing God is faithful. And again, let me review. We need to be obedient to what God says. We need to act in faith. Problems may come. As a matter of fact, problems will come. Jesus said, in this world, you may have affliction. You will have affliction. But trust me, I have overcome the world. And if Jesus is with us, there's nobody that can oppose us. So God is always faithful. Be diligent on what God has entrusted you. Maybe you are already serving in missions. Maybe God called you to serve as a president of a company or to establish a business somewhere. Maybe you are just working for a big international company. I don't know. But wherever God has set you, just be faithful to him and be faithful with everything that God has entrusted you. Even Abraham, the father of the faith, was faithful not just to his calling before God, but when he met the priest of the God Most High, when he met Melchizedek, he gave him a 10%. And that's another way to be faithful, just by giving you tithes and offerings. So first, be obedient. Second, be diligent. Third, be faithful. Remember, you will mess up. God knows he's there. He already knows. Repent, move on, move closer to him. Be ready to rescue those around you that may have fallen into the trap or may have fallen into a lie or may have fallen from the faith and bring them back to the family of God. And lastly, just remember that even if we are faithless, he remains faithful for he cannot disown himself. He remains faithful forever, as it says in Psalm 146. Let us pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for today. We thank you that maybe today we have seen the life of Abraham uh, from a different perspective. But we thank you because I know you are talking to us. You want us to be close to you. You want us to be faithful to you as you're always faithful to us. Lord, today, as you look into our hearts, forgive us, forgive us when we mess up. Forgive us when we lie thinking it is within your will and bring us closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I find it really interesting that Melchizedek 
brought out bread and wine when he came to Abraham. Bread and wine. Hmm. That sounds familiar. Yes. From the New Testament, and in light of the New Testament, we know exactly what that bread and wine meant, what it means for us. It was Jesus at the Last Supper. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body. Jesus was presenting himself as the bread of life. And then after that, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the wine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. The very first time that it is mentioned in the Bible that they have fellowship, they have communion with bread and wine is in Genesis chapter 14 when Melchizedek brought out bread and wine before Abraham. I'm sure Abraham didn't quite understand what they were doing, but it is what we are doing today. We are taking the bread and the wine, the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus. I'm going to pray and I'm going to give some time for you to distribute the elements. And as the elements are being distributed, I want you to close your eyes after you get the elements and let's prepare our hearts to receive the elements of the communion, the elements of the Lord's Supper, the body of Christ and the blood of Christ given for our forgiveness. Let us pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, I pray as we take the bread and the wine, symbolizing your son's flesh and blood, that our heart is ready, that we are truly forgiven, that we are one with you. As we take the elements, as we drink, as we eat, Lord, I pray that you work in us, giving us the strength, giving us everything that we need to be closer to you and to be ready to say sorry and truly repent when we mess up in our lives and run back to you as we know you receive us with open arms because even when we were enemies, you died for us at the cross to forgive us of all of our sins. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
as we've all probably been served now, let's take the bread and the wine. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice, for your body broken for our sin, for your blood that is a new covenant. Thank you, Lord. We glorify your name. We sing to you and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Do you stand with us, please? We are so thankful that you have chosen to join us today for our, our time of weekly worship and hearing of God's word through and, and singing a song and tithes and offering and prayer. Um, we hope that you've been blessed by being with us today. Um, we encourage you to um, reach out to Brother Rodney and encourage him um, as they continue through this time of transition and as we can continue through transition um, to have them come and serve with us here in San Pedro Sula at ICF. Remember, Thursday night at 7 we'll start um, online Bible study um, via Zoom. We'll get that link sent out this week, so you can be sure to join us for that time of um, studying the book of Judges. Um, it's an 11-week study, so jump in with us and join with us, and hopefully by the end of that study, Pastor Rodney will be here with us um, in person to start the next study. So y'all have a great week. Thanks for coming. Let this be our benediction. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come into your house today to worship you. Lord, may our hearts be open to you and what you are speaking into our lives, Lord. May our lives glorify you. May our work glorify you. May us, as we continue to serve and fulfill the mission that you have given us, our calling upon our lives, may that bring glory and honor to you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.